Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. First of all, I have to apologise. You can probably tell, uh, I think I've got a cold this morning, so I'm going to sound bunged up and awful for the entire video. Um, I actually also have a newborn, uh, which means obviously I'm not sleeping very well. I have to get up throughout the night uh, to feed him. I don't have to feed him, my wife does, but change nappies, you know, he cries all the time. So my brain is not actually at 100%. However, I've got two topics to discuss today. Uh, one is an update on the Sitzer Burnett uh, situation where um, the lawsuit that is suing uh, the NAR and affiliates, i.e. brokerages, uh, companies in regards to uh, fixing commission rates. Um, and then also an update in commercial real estate in regards to mezzanine loans. Uh, now I'm gonna start with that first. Um, I didn't actually kind of realize what a mezzanine loan was. Uh, however, apparently uh, there are a huge amount of uh, foreclosures that are happening on mezzanine loans across the US. Uh, so that apparently is over double so far this year, and that's just up to October uh, in foreclosures that were last year. Um, and obviously, I think prior to the interest rate rises, um, apparently these rates were about 10 to 12 percent. Uh, they have now risen to 15 percent. So obviously that's kind of like a 50 percent rise almost in some situations. Um, so it was 62 notices that have been um, uh, issued. And I had to look up what a MES loan or a mezzanine loan was because I'm not in commercial real estate. And I don't see that as often, obviously, or I don't see it at all. Uh, now, they apparently they've become more popular in after the financial crisis. And that was when big banks um, uh, were more conservative with lending and smaller banks were moving into the commercial real estate space because it was kind of more uh, secure than residential, obviously, where these loans had gone out on properties where um, lend, sorry, um, people who'd borrowed the money could not repay them. Um, and so it's different from a standard loan, obviously, where you're putting down uh, equity and then obviously paying a lending fee. Uh, these are secured uh, instead of by cash, they're secured by equity in the company doing the purchase. Uh, now, apparently that has made uh, these companies more liquid. So they've actually got more, um, you know, they're allowed to put part of their company down as um, the uh the forfeit should they not pay the loan and so therefore you know they're not having to deploy as much capital into those places um now that the reason for that sorry because of that they are at a higher interest rate than normally i'll give you a quick um typical uh definition of this uh, so that i actually get this kind of right as opposed to having it completely wrong um, mezzanine loans are similar to second mortgages except a mezzanine loan is secured by the stock of the corporation that owns the property as opposed to the real estate itself if the lender forecloses on the stock it owns the corporation that owns the building. So effectively, you're putting your company on the line as opposed to putting the down payment on the line loan, down payment of the loan on the line. So uh, I think the risk for this for shareholders and people who own these companies is very high. Uh, and so if we're seeing that huge amount of, you know, double what we were seeing last year, only up to the 10th month, and we probably could see more before the end of the year, then that is going to be uh, a big indicator, I think, of where potentially commercial real estate is heading. You know, that's kind of what we've been talking about in the past. Uh, and so it's going to be interesting to see uh, if that side of it also is going that way, which I wasn't even aware of. And obviously you're going to see companies changing hands, not just commercial real estate and the prices dropping. Uh, probably the prices of these companies uh, is also going to change hands, but also, you know, it's going to be in a, a different situation. Um, some examples of this apparently is Arden Group won the foreclosure auction for Sharif El Gamal's Margarita Vauxville Hotel in Times Square. They provided a $57 million secured loan secured by the property's ownership. Uh, and then they started to foreclose on it when the loan wasn't paid, when the interest wasn't paid. Uh, another example is uh, SL Green took over Ben Ashkenazi's uh, interest in 625 Madison Avenue in Manhattan after acquiring the state at a UCC auction. Uh, they moved to foreclose on a $195 million loan uh, two months earlier. So it's short term loans these are and they're obviously not coming good or these uh, people taking out the loans are not able to cover the interest. So I think that's a really interesting thing to take note of, and I will keep you guys updated on that. Apologies if my my jargon is not fully up to spec. I'm not a commercial lender in the commercial space, uh, so I may well have kind of 
said those with the wrong terms. Uh, the other thing is, again, as I said, it's an update on the Sitza Burnett situation. Um, as I mentioned the other day, we're seeing a lot of these copycat lawsuits that are being uh, launched. Um, we did actually see, you know, some of the brokerages, Keller Williams, Home Services of America and the NAR, uh, were the kind of people that went that were after that were that were being sued in the Sitzer Burnett trial. Um, and they are scrambling apparently to understand the consequences of what this is going to mean. Obviously there's an appeal there, but apparently appeal could take 12 months. And if you're paying lawyers in that appeal process, it's two thousand dollars an hour. So the cost to these brokerages, you know, should they undertake this appeal is massive let alone potential penalties they're going to have to pay as well um so there's been identical lawsuits um and no residential players or brokerages have already settled and are guaranteed safe from these um so we're going to see a lot of these defendants writing checks uh, and they're probably going to try and settle these lawsuits uh, which is going to cost a lot of money especially if they're trying to get them settled before trial uh, and obviously with that if they're doing a settlement i expect the laws or the ways in which they do business will have to be changed or altered as part of that settlement as well as paying um so there are other brokerages obviously that are now being brought into this antitrust litigation um and i think that does also include uh compass who i am an agent underneath that's my brokerage um and they were profitable for the first time in the last two quarters um and so it's a it's a difficult time for compass i don't want to comment on that too much but if you are um heavily invested in uh, kind of vc backed brokerage that is just starting to see profits and as you're doing that you're seeing massive change in the industry that's going to affect your bottom line and is also going to probably cost you quite a bit of money uh that's going to be an odd time for for any of the brokerages in that situation um apparently remax agreed to an eight figure settlement ahead of the trial at 84 million dollars uh, and anywhere at 55 million dollars uh and the, these deals also apply to merle a lawsuit of illinois slated for trial early into 2022 2024 that could fetch up to 40 billion dollars in damages so uh i think it's going to be a very very uh interesting space to be watching as i've said about a lot of things here um there are obviously a number obviously of other brokerages that are trying to get to that settlement space you know just to kind of cover themselves um and so I'm going to try and keep you guys updated on that. Uh, Compass weren't involved in the Sitzer Burnett trial, um, but there are quite a few that are being launched in Illinois and New York. Um, so that's probably going to be something that we see. Um, there have been a lot of these CEOs who are not commenting on this because obviously it's probably a, a stage which is difficult to comment on. Um, but I will keep you guys updated. Obviously, it's going to be interesting to follow the penalties, what it's going to cost brokerages. But realistically, what I'm very interested in to see is how this is going to change uh, the day to day operations of brokerages, how they conduct business and how that is going to affect their bottom line and their profit. Uh, and obviously that is probably probably going to mean that there are some players that leave the market anyway guys thank you for tuning in again apologies for my uh current voice that is kind of being bumped up by uh this cold that i think i have uh thank you so much for spending your time with me i'll be back tomorrow with another update and some more news in a different space um so if you'd like to subscribe continue hearing my updates uh, i'd really appreciate it thank you so much guys for tuning in and have a great rest of your day goodbye